first part of the Campfire of Christ uh, series. And of course, now we are now setting up the tent with God, right? We're now enjoying the campfire, which is coming with God, right? And like I said, with, with Peter and May and Quentin Meyer and another person, not sure I haven't seen this episode, but we're going to set up the campfire wherever you're at in terms of your walk with God. And when you get to that campfire, let's see what we can do, right? So, just for a recap, everybody, you know what I'm saying? So, if you was here, you see it on YouTube, Instagram Live, or even if you haven't seen it, we'll give you a recap. So, the first week I want everybody to know is, before you get to that campfire of Christ, we have to change our walk, right? We have to change our walk in terms of how we can do it, right? Because sometimes somebody may have a little, what? You want to give us a demonstration again? For the wall? Yeah. For sure. You don't care, I'll be juicy. I'll be good again. Hold on. I'm going to keep away from the superstars, my bad. Knox College superstars, man. Actually, they worldwide superstars, my bad. Go ahead, show me, show me y'all walk. So, of course, this, this could be somebody's walk when you're starting off with God, right? Yeah. This could be another walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And everything's cool. Everything is gravy, right? And all, no matter what your walk is, it's going to be great. But understand that sometimes your walk may need to be changed because if somebody tries to knock you off your path, right? Somebody may say that you're not worthy. You can't do this. Nothing you're doing is going to be great, right? You may sway off, off the path, right? In terms of your campfire to Christ, right? We all know when you go to a campfire, some paths will be wide. Some paths may be super narrow to the point one step may mess you up, right? So in that instance, you always got to change your walk up because you always want to stay on your toes, right? So that's the first part we talked about in week one. And the second part to week one we talked about picking a different path, right? And we know on that campfire, to go on that campfire, there's some paths that are bad, some paths that may be better for you to travel, right? Even that, that dangerous path may be, you know, super short, but you may see a whole bunch of treacherous things that you don't even want to partake in, right? And so those things are very crucial in terms of our start to finding our campfire. The second week we talked about, we only had to take our essentials and walk toward the campfire. Right, only take the essentials with you because we know in a campfire you can always have, you know, a sleeping bag, uh, your portable game system. You can have. Oh, I sound like an old man. Portable game system. That's that's it. Anyway, you can have a lot of things in terms of the things you want to bring with you. But we all know the essentials: water, food. Right. That's the that's the big essentials that you need in order to live. And so with God, you have to understand that not everything that you're bringing with you. The bad friends, the uh, the toxic relationships, whatever it is, you can't always bring everything in terms of your walk to Christ. And I know I talked to somebody out there, but no matter what it is, a lot of things you can't bring with you because a lot of things are going to have you staying back where you should have escalated from. And so many things take our lives. We had to figure it out. So what now, right? So by this time, your campsite and... Um, you have made God the number one priority in your life. What has or what will happen in your life? And I'm going to go through it with you, of course. So the first um, scripture in terms of uh, this lesson that I want to bring up is uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. And that's Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. And if anybody wants a Bible or, um, or a note card, just let me know. I'll give it for you right now. All right? If anybody wants one, just let me know. Um, but... Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. What that says is, But whatsoever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Right? So but whatsoever my, was to my profit, I was considered loss. Right? So whatever you think you may gain, you may think it's a loss. Right? And you may think just because... You know, something's taken away from you. It's a loss, right? You, you may think because you're going through a, a slump right now. You're going through a, a sad time. You're going through a more depressing time than you actually would like to have. You may think that's a loss of your life and that your life is nowhere near where it should be. And you think that it's going to be for no reason. And you think, whatever you may think, I got something for you. So in this life, anything you lose to grow closer to God was never a loss, you know? You can take it if you want to. You can just put your name on it. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. It's cool. It's cool. Hey, Ella. We all, we all, we all doing our thing. But anything you lose to grow closer to God was never a loss. And I think that's a big thing, right? Because sometimes when somebody leaves out our lives or somebody talks dirt about us, we, we think, 
dang, man, I lost, I lost a good friend. Well, I lost this relationship. I lost this, right? We see every day on Justin LeBoy, uh spiritual post. We see everything. Somebody always talking about some, you know, dang, I need, I need my ex back. I need this back. I need that back, right? We see all these things, but it's just like, if it was lost to begin with, and that loss made us better in life, our mood was better, right? Our walk is better. Us coming to God is better. That thing was never supposed to stay in our lives. See, when God brings things to our lives, it's for a reason, right? He, he brings it for a season, and he takes it out so that you can now grow with it, right? Let's take into account if you wear a weighted vest or whatever you, you lift the weights, right? It's really treacherous. It's really tough for that, that time being, right? But that, that weight is not meant to be carried with you everywhere you go, right? That weight is only there for you to become stronger. So kind of look at that in your life, right? You're lifting those weights to become stronger. You're lifting those weights so you can endure that heavy lifting, right? So whatever God brings in your life, understand if it's taken away, it may be for your best benefit. So you can actually grow and be better from it. And to my point, you are at your destination. You will be very lonely, right? We're talking about the losses. We're talking about people who may not be there in our walk anymore, but understand that when you're trying to go toward that campfire of God, and when you get there to the campfire, you may be lonely on that path. When you start your path, right, either that coming to uh, college, going to a job, um, moving somewhere, no matter what it is, you may be having a lot of people behind you, right? You're starting a new venture. Everybody's there, there with you in the beginning. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kay, you're doing your thing. Good job. Yeah, how's you doing? Really great. Yeah, good, good job. But then, as you start to go, they see... It's, it's really hard. It's really hard. Some people start to just say, you know what? Keep walking. I'm, I'm tired. I'm done. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, it's hard to support you right now. I can't. Right? And they'll be like, I want to take the short route. So they always, see, this is the thing about people. People always want to come see you at the end. They always want to come to the campfire, but they don't want to come to the process of coming to the campfire. They're always like, hey, let me know when you get there. You know, like, it's, it's crazy how many people, like, say with my clothes and stuff, they'd be like, hey, bro, uh, hey, let me know when you uh, drop your price to $10. Oh, okay, bro, you can just buy now. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, I mean, I guess, whatever. And so it's, it's, it's people who always want to get when you, like, when you blow up, they like, oh, yeah, my boy. My boy did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they wasn't there when everything was starting up. They wasn't there when nothing was going on. They wasn't there when things wasn't shaking for a little bit, you know? And in those instances, that's when you have to understand that your process may be very lonely. And now you may be saying, I miss the company that I made those decisions with. Those distractions are tearing me away from you, God, right? Because you may be trying to get those people back because you had fun. You may be trying to get those people back because, you know, even though it was like, it was a distraction, it was not tearing me away from you, God. I understand that. But what 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says is, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Or it also says good character, right? Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals or good character. Understand, when you bring somebody into your life, right, or you try to bring them back in your life, understand that feeling will always come back. No matter how much you want to try to Say somebody is great for you. Nobody I want to say somebody should be back in my life. I need that person back in my life. Even though you know how they move, you know their passions, you know what they find valuable in this life. You have to understand that not every company that you had at one point is good company for you. Right? For example, when I was just coming up through high school and stuff, the people who was there for me, you know, it was great. You know, it was cool. I was like, I appreciated them, right? As I started going on to my old path and trying to trying to become successful in my own eyes, they kind of seen it as, why are you doing that? It doesn't make any sense. You should stick with this path. This path is easier, Dwayne. You should do this. Hey, you know what? Come to this party with me, you know? Even though these, this, these parties is known to be, like, really bad and things started, to, you know, like, like, pow, pow, pew, pew all the time. But, hey, just come up. It's cool. Just come up here. A lot of times, those are people where those people could be cool. They could have great intentions. But having those people in your circle may not be the best thing for your growth. And in those instances, I had to understand that those, those were great friends in that moment, but I need a new crowd. I need a new circle, right? On that campfire to God, any, any person, any group can have you go off the beaten path. 
right? Because you may be going to the campfire and then somebody might say, hey, let's go check out this little this path over here. It looks really nice. Knowing you shouldn't go over there, but if you go over there thinking like, you know what? Let's do it. Oh well, right? You might go over there and be, you know what I'm saying, in harm's way. But when God wants you to go forward, God wants you to go on a path, you gotta stay on it. And all the people who come with you are people who have the like-minded things to keep going and be resilient with you. So in order to enjoy the presence of God, you have to embrace the absence of the old you. Now you have to understand you are a new person, right? When you took to account that you had to change your walk to endure the bad times, right? When you said you had to um, change a new path, you have to take a new path. And of course, you have to take the essentials with you. You left everything behind you, right? You left the old baggage behind. You left the old people behind. You left the negative things behind you so you can go to a new campfire, right? You left that thing so you can see the glory that God has for you. You are not going to be the same person as you was. And you got to be okay with that. You have to be okay with knowing that the old you is behind you. The new you is going to be the thing that God is going to do spring a whole bunch of blessings onto, okay? So, now God has changed you. You are, you have embraced the new you. Now for the second point, right? Now you have got the new you, right? Now everything you've done, you're now a changed person. You're now lonely. You may feel lonely. You may feel like, dang, like, is this path the best one for me, right? Now you're waiting for God's blessings. You see everybody on Instagram and social media, they look like they, they lavish, they're living great. And you just look like you just stagnant. Am I on the right path? Now God is saying to you to spread the new you. Right? Now, now you are that you are not a finished product, but you are now a more refurbished, you're a more published version of you. Now he wants to, to go out there and give that back to other people. Right? So now I want everybody to turn to Matthew chapter 10. And we'll go through 26 to 33. And I have some Bibles right there if you guys want to go to it. Or if not, it's on the, it will be on the screen in a little bit. But um, I also wanted to um, kind of make it a point, even for myself, to kind of just get to the Bible more. Right? And um, this is the, the key thing in terms of us coming to God. Right? Because we have to understand that we can't understand God's word if we don't know his language. Right? And so understanding his language it means that we may have to read the Bible to understand that the things that we may be going through is already talked about in the Bible. Right? I remember one time I was, I was just super discouraged and I hated everybody who was going against me, right? But in that instance, there was an exact thing that the Bible was talking about that was going through my same exact scenario. And so God tells you everything, how to deal with it and how to deal with those people, but we just gotta read his word, right? So so you have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered. And nothing secret that will not become unknown. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear, whisper. Pro proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. I got to go back to that one again. I got to say that one again. So we're back to verse 28. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head, the hairs of, the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. All right? So, I like to call this one, deny God or he'll deny you. Right? So, like this said, right, a couple of highlight points I want to bring out from here is, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Right? I think I mean, it's, it's common that we're going to overvalue our body, right? Because this is the physical presence we have on this earth, right? Our body. Right? But we, all, we always hear that it's about the soul of the person. Right? The best thing, every time somebody here say something about like, oh, what do you like about that person? Great soul. You know? 
I mean, I guess, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, whatever you're going through, you might say, oh, that person, that soul. Like, every person's going to have something about them, right? But the person that always will stick out in your mind, no matter if it's your family members, relationship, a friend, you're going to say something about how they make you feel, right? You're going to say that their soul was great, right? They were really compassionate. They were loving toward me. None of that is, is a physical trait. But all those things are a spiritual thing. So the, be the biggest thing that we have in this life is to, is for our souls, right? And then the second point I want to bring up from this um, verse is, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven, right? We have to acknowledge God in terms of what he's doing in our lives and share that blessing to everybody, right? I remember I told about everybody, we have our, our walk with God. We have everything that we already have already, right? We have our talents. We have our passions. We have what makes us great. But now we have to acknowledge it before God, right? So now I want everybody to imagine every gift we, we have, right? Imagine every gift that you have got to this point to this day, right? If we kept it to ourselves, what would our future be? Because I want everybody to understand this. Nothing that we have is ours, right? I know that sounds selfish. I know that sounds bad. But everything that we've got in this life is for a purpose. It's for God. It's for to bring people closer to Christ, right? No matter what you have. If you're really talented with numbers, you know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you're really smart. You're really smart. Yeah, thank God. You know, even, even if you say that real quick, or you ain't got to say it, right? You can just say, yeah, I've been praying about it, blah, blah, blah. People are going to be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Even if they think that's going to be a cheat code, be getting smarter, okay, cool. But whatever you have, we have to give it back out to everybody else, okay? Because normally, right, people are going to say, oh, I got this. I got this blessing, right? Oh, it came from God, for sure. It came from God. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got it from God. Oh, thank God. You know what I'm saying? But when we change our, our mindset from, oh, this came from God, but this is for God, right? You can see a lot of people who may say, like, Oh yeah, oh thank God for this, thank God for this. But as soon as something bad happens, now they just they go and they they post some stuff about bad things. I'm like, oh man, God forgot about me, or you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my own thing now. I'm doing my own thing, right? But when you change your mindset to I'm doing everything for God, anything that bad happens, you will understand that it came from God. You understand that those things that may be holding you down, if you change your from your change mindset, no longer will hurt you or harm you, okay? So no matter what you have, right? If you're, if you're really brilliant, uh, you have a great talent for things, you have this or that, it has to all be given back to God, okay? So what is the campfire that we've been searching for, right? And because this is the series about finding our own campfire to God because we may be seeing somebody else's campfire, but we can't be discouraged, right? We gotta stay focused on ours because somebody else's campfire may be looking really bright, super fancy, but we all know that some campfires may dwindle out really fast, right? Even though it may get to theirs faster, it may get out really fast. So what are we searching for, right? We're on our campfire walk. What are we searching for? The campfire is simply the position to rejoice and embrace the glory of God, right? So everything that we've done in terms of these weeks or even today, it's all to position ourselves to embrace what God is going to give us. Because what God can give us is way more important than anything that we've ever encounter, but we can't see that if we haven't put ourselves in a position to accept God's glory, right? We can't continue to keep doing our own thing over here, like, hey, God, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go do these bad things over here, but I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to see it a little bit. We got to put ourselves in the best position to get it, right? You wouldn't go out for a job and just say, you know what, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to drink and smoke before I come there, like, two minutes before I come to the job interview, right? You're not putting yourself in a position to accept everything, right? And now we are all going to go to like, we're going to sin. We're going to do things that may not be the best in terms of our lives. But if our intentions are to come closer to God, right? If our intentions are to in, in, include God into our lives, then we will now see that what we're doing is putting ourselves in a better position to get the blessings from God. And when we get those blessings, then we give it back out, right? So a little recap from our uh, campfire to God and what we have to do to get there. First, we must change our walk, right? Whoever you are, you, you must change your walk. You know, like, Kay and Rail, they had great walks, right? They had, they had fancy walks, you know what I'm saying? They had, they had the good walks. But in, in times of need, right, in times of bad times, we have to change our walks sometimes, right? The second thing, you have to change your path, 
whatever path you're going down, if you think your path is going toward God and the intentions of God and seeing the great things he has for you, great. But if not, we have to change our path so we can get back to seeing the great things, right? The third thing, take what you need. There's going to be a lot of people in your lives that's going to say, you know, you should do this, you should do that, or, hey, come over here. You used to be this person, so come over here. You're going to enjoy it again. We can do fun things. We can do great things. But if you know those things are not great for your walk and it's going to be a distraction, you've got to take it out and cut it out so you can keep going. The fourth thing, of course, embrace the new you. So these last two are the things we covered today. So, of course, the fourth thing, we have to embrace the new you. You are now new. If you did the first three things, you are now a new person. Nobody can tell you different. Nobody can tell you that, oh, you're a bad person. You did this. Because as long as you understand that you left that new you, whatever somebody has to say about you does not mean nothing, right? And, of course, the last thing, share God's blessings. No matter what you're going through, no matter who you are, you have to give out those blessings. You may say you want to be selfish with your time and be selfish with what you have. But sometimes it's great to give it back. Because this world is going to be predicated, or even God's blessings to this world is going to be predicated through you. Even if you don't think that you can do great things, you, you, you may think that what you have is insufficient to this world. It's not. Right? Because what you have is beautiful and great. All y'all. All y'all have a, a talent, uh, something that God has given you. Give it back to the world because that's going to be a blessing that if you give it out, your abundance of blessings, God will always overflow you with more. God's going to give you everything you need, but it's going to go to waste if you don't give it back out. Okay? I appreciate everybody coming out um, to just this campfire of God. And this next thing I have for everybody is the prayer of salvation, which is also uh, the sinner's prayer. Right? We all sing every day. Um, we all have um, go off God's uh, path for us sometimes. Right? We always try to figure out things of how to get through the life. But the best thing to do is always come back to God and recenter our minds to him. Okay, so I'm going to read this for everybody. And you can either read along with me, you can say it in your head, or just pray. But I'll say it out loud for everybody. Um, the sinner's prayer. So what that says is, Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner, and I have broken your laws. I understand that my sin has separated me from you. I am sorry, and I ask you to forgive me. I accept the fact that you, Son, Jesus Christ, died for me and was rescued and is alive today and hears my prayers. I now open my heart's door and invite Jesus in to become my Lord and my Savior. I give him control and ask that he would rule and reign in my heart so that his perfect will would be accomplished in my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I want everybody to know if you have agreed to the sinner's prayer, if you have understood that you have may have not been the best in terms of this week, this day, the month, the year, but you understand that you want to come back to God, you are now saved. And I appreciate everybody and understand that no matter what you're going through in your life, in your path, it may be dark, it may be scary, but understand that that campfire is going to be way more important than trying to stay along with that baggage and everything that's behind you. Enjoy the new you. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Thank y'all.